Hi. Uh, thank you for being here and thank you for the opportunity to present this work. This is a collaborative effort between our institution and the Virginia Maryland College of Veterinary Medicine uh, that's affiliated with Virginia Tech. And it's also a product of the work of uh, Marion Seward, who's a master's student there who just recently defended. Um, soft tissue sarcomas in dogs arise in 15% of them, uh, in 15% of all subcutaneous uh, skin tumors in dogs. And uh, in parallel, that's also 7% of pediatric cancers, which is our specialty of children's. Um, they're recognized as a clinically relevant model uh, that is similar to the human uh, tumors. And uh, not only are they similar in terms of uh, their histo histology and other parameters, they're also similar in terms of the way that they're treated in that wide excision is the most uh, common treatment with wide margins and so on. And uh, if that is not available, then uh, adjective therapy is also used. And uh, partial treatment's also uh, an option uh, for dogs that uh, have metastatic disease, for example, or widespread disease. Um, and recurrent uh, tumors undergo surgical excision and adjunctive therapy at uh, the College of Med Veterinary Medicine very, uh, on a regular basis. Um, so the motivation uh, for this work was to uh, determine if the use of MR high food technology for complete treatment of canine tissue sarcoma uh, does, in fact, provide a parallel uh, to human clinical trial in that it's, uh, it's applicable uh, to these patients. Um, and uh, it, we have an opportunity here to improve uh, the efficacy where complete treatment is not possible with this technology. Um, towards this, uh, we evaluated the feasibility of targeting soft tissue sarcomas uh, with MR HIFU uh, and considered tumor type, uh, tumor site, the presence of critical structures and the treat in the treatment path. And our hypothesis was that most uh, canine soft tissue sarcomas would be targetable with a commercial MR HIFU system. The inclusion criteria were that uh, these are patients who are seen at the center over a five-year period. Um, they have uh, confirmed uh, soft tissue sarcomas and have available cross-sectional imaging. They're considered not targetable if uh, you had spinal cord or uh, uh, um, spinal cord within one centimeter of uh, the tumor, or they were obscured by bone or gas, uh, or we had disseminated neoplasia. Um, skip. So uh, there are some just examples of how similar these look to uh, tumors that uh, um, also appear in humans. Uh, some are uh, large in size, some are small, and uh, they extend across tissue boundaries, as you see on the right. Um, we also included a, a number of assessments uh, that provided kind of a yes or no binary answer to whether uh, we had uh, various structures impacting um, the targetability of these tumors. And uh, another point of consideration is the actual treatment volume that was possible. As I mentioned, some are small and some are large, so you have uh, really to establish what, what's feasible with this technology. So we picked 200 centimeters uh, as, as a kind of a cutoff to evaluate these. And um, the imaging data that we evaluated included uh, 12 MRI studies and uh, mostly CT studies because CTs were uh, more prominent in the uh, veterinary uh, field as well as uh, they are uh, available with uh, thinner slices. Um, in terms of the tumor types evaluated, the majority were fibrosarcoma or unclassified, um, but you have a pretty wide mix of various tumor types here. Um, we found that uh, the targetability varied by tumor type, and obviously uh, you have some of the more difficult to reach tumor types at the bottom there. Um, and. Uh, we have a breakdown of uh, uh, tumors by where they were found in terms of the overall patient pool that the clinic sees, and uh, the majority were in the head uh, and spine, um, as well as in the truncal region. Um, you also have abdominal and disseminated masses and appendicular tumors, which are most targetable, but uh, don't make up the majority of the tumors. Um, however, if uh, using our criteria, we found that targetability was much more widespread than just being confined to 
uh, the um, extremities. And uh, if we looked at the total tumor volume, uh, it was impacted by uh, critical structures or overlying structures in uh, the majority of cases. Um, let me just, um, in terms of uh, evaluating our hypothesis, the majority of soft tissue sarcoma were targetable by MR HIFU, consistent with the hypothesis, and multiple factors may affect the targeting and treatment of canine soft tissue sarcoma. Um, the critical structures uh, do uh, pose uh, many limitations on how the treatments can be uh, planned and executed, um, but and we had the majority of the soft tissue sarcomas within uh, the one centimeter margin of the skin that we have set. Um, how, however, 94.6% were otherwise targetable or partially targetable, which is a hopeful sign. And uh, the mean distance from the skin uh, in children, for example, in a, a recent study is four centimeters. So we have uh, actually smaller margins in the dogs uh, and tougher treatments to plan. And just wanted to finish. Uh, this was a retrospective study uh, in that we, don't, we didn't actually treat the animals. Uh, we just evaluated the targetability. And uh, we didn't take into account motion, which obviously would uh, pose uh, additional problems. And uh, targetability of recurrent tumors uh, without a discrete mass or metastatic lesions was not um, uh, feasible to evaluate in this case. Uh, and thank you very much. Any questions? Uh, she's come on up while we're setting up questions. I need coffee. Uh, so 10 seconds or less, top use of this model to get to clinic. What's it going to help us get? How's it going to help us get there? What questions can we answer? Again, 10 um, seconds. Sure. So <laughs> if, if we're thinking about how to uh, optimize a treatment to the best of our abilities and import it into the, the clinic, uh, I think this is the, the way forward in order to uh, get a treatment that otherwise is not possible to optimize as a part of a clinical trial, um, but you, you are able to use it in a pretty much a clinical trial-like setting in spontaneous tumor models uh, as, as a step just before a clinical trial. So Same variety of questions for as clinic. Yes, cool. same variety. Thank yep. you. Thank you. Thank you.